All right, Poker. Poker says, if Oregon Cashflow Pro had to pick a product to go with first, would you go with an Index Universal Life product or a Whole Life Insurance and why? And then follows it up with how might you set them up? Okay, good question. Actually, I really like that question. So whether I would go with Index Universal Life or a Whole Life product depends on who is getting the insurance. It also depends on what they want to do with it, but it more depends on who. Because if it's a young person, if it's somebody, a, a juvenile, I would, or even somebody, say, under 30, I would probably go with an Index Universal Life Policy first for a couple of reasons. Um, I'm assuming that they don't have a, a lot of income, or in the case of a juvenile, they don't really have any income, but you typically fund those policies at a much lower level. And if we're funding the policies at a much lower level, say 1200 to 3600 a year or 100 to $300 a month, you're not going to get much cash value growth out of a whole life policy because the underlying cost of insurance is a lot higher than the underlying cost of insurance on an index universal life product. Now, you also get the added benefit that max funding an index universal life product has greater potential for growth. It doesn't have the guarantees that come with the whole life insurance, but it does have greater potential because it's tied to an index in the stock market. Well, what works best when we're tied to an index in the stock market? Time. Time to go through the ups and the downs and to end up with a good average return. That may not happen in one or two years or may not happen even in 10 years. Depends on what the stock market's doing. So a young person has 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 years that they can build up this policy and get that growth above that low cost of insurance and before, before they get into an older age where the cost of insurance ends up going up and up and up. And by that time, you need to have already earned your gains in the policy in order to make it worthwhile to continue the policy. So it's a high possibility with a good designed index universal life product. And so for a younger person, I would start out with that. Now, if they have the ability to fund it at a little higher level, and say it's somebody who has an emergency fund that they've built up, that they're just, it's storing it in a bank or a checking account or a savings account or a money market account or a CD, something that doesn't pay very much in interest. Uh, or they have a capital expense account. Maybe they own a home and they're saving for a new roof or they set money aside for any other repairs that may come up. The whole life product is a great product to serve as that savings asset in place of an emergency fund or a capital expense account. You also can contribute a lot more to a whole life product and you want to when you're contributing larger amounts and more so than what you might put into a retirement account, it's nice to have the guarantees that come along with the whole life insurance. It's a lot easier to get above the basic costs of the insurance when you're funding it at a much higher level. And so the whole life insurance works better when we're doing very large high cash value premiums. And so in that case, if somebody needs a product to put those funds in or you or you need to shore up your financial pyramid with a nice solid base that whole life insurance product can serve as a very solid base on that financial pyramid so that's when I would go with a whole life insurance first at least to cover that base and after that base is covered depending on how old that person is depending on how much risk they're willing to take on it's not a whole lot of risk with an index universal life product, but it does present some risk compared to whole life insurance. Uh, if you want to have the opportunity for more growth within your policy, that's when you would go with the index universal life product. Whole life product is great if you're looking to utilize the cash value inside of it to get your growth outside the policy. So hopefully that answered that question well, but that is how I would determine which one to go with first, index universal life or whole life. Now, how might I set them up? We try to set them up to minimize the cost of insurance. We always want to try to minimize the cost. And that is how we maximize the cash value and the growth within the policy. 
with an index universal life product, everything that you can max, everything that you can fund above that cost of insurance is going to be growing with whatever index you're tied to. Poker says, thanks, good breakdown. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, so everything is going to be tied to the growth in the index that you choose. So we want to minimize those insurance costs by utilizing an option B death benefit. Um, as we get later on in life, it's always about the net amount at risk, the NAR, the net amount at risk when it comes to what the costs are for an index universal life policy. And the net amount at risk is the difference between your cash value and your death benefit. Whatever that difference is, is the net amount at risk, and that's what your cost of insurance is based off of. So we always want to try and minimize that. There's different ways that we can minimize it throughout the life of, the po of a policy, uh, depending on if you're still contributing to it and at what levels you're contributing to it. So best to stay in contact with your agent as your policy moves along in that case so that we set it up properly, but then we also maintain it properly. And I am planning to put together a checklist so that you guys can easily see, okay, this is the policy I've got. What are the things I need to pay attention to and at what time? So like a whole life policy, uh, seven years is the magic number for a whole life policy. Once you've had the policy for over seven years, we can look at doing other things with it. We can turn it into a reduced paid up if you no longer want to make premium payments. We can reduce the amount of um, premiums that we're paying on it, or we may even be forced to reduce the amount of premiums that we're paying on it. With an index universal life policy, when you get to uh, typically age 75, you have the opportunity to uh, trigger an overloan protection rider. That's kind of a last ditch um, pull the ripcord scenario, but sometimes it's necessary to do in order to protect what you've built up. Okay. Um, other other points to consider might be um, anytime you need to anytime you want to adjust the costs within a policy, or maybe you need more insurance at some point we can look at doing more insurance or maybe you need to be re-rated on a policy. If you didn't get the health rating that you wanted, after a year we can go back to the company and try and get re-rated and see if we can get a better rate, better health rating, which will increase your cash value growth in the long run. So a lot of different things to consider. I'm going to be putting together a checklist on that. Uh, I don't know how quickly. Don't know how quickly because we've definitely been keeping very busy. Uh, but that's the plan. Now that was... Uh, mostly setting up the index universal life and when it comes to setting up a whole life insurance policy um, I'm a big fan of the 9010 design if it's available from the carrier companies like Guardian Mass Mutual 10% uh, being a base premium 90% being all paid up additions that you can put in which ends up giving you about really close to 90% cash value in the first year that's the that's the type of designs that I like, and it fits most people's uh, financial goals the best um, because it leads to the higher cash growth in the short term and in the long term. Not all companies allow us to design it that way, though. A company like Penn Mutual, we can do a, an 80-20 design is about the best that we can do. Still a good product. It has really good growth after that first year. You just don't get 90% cash value available in the first year. You get more closer to 80% available in the first year. Um, but it has really good dividends, and that company's been around a long time, and it's a good one. A lot of people like it for doing infinite banking. So depending on the carrier, um, we gotta we got to design them a little bit differently. This was a question asked and answered during one of our Wealth Care Wednesdays live stream. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below or join us on one of our Wealth Care Wednesday live streams where you can ask the question and we'll answer it on the air live. Hope you found value in today's video. If you'd like to find out more about IUL and the whole life, check out these videos right over here and we'll see you next time. Now go maximize your cash flow.
supply. I hope you found value in today's video. If you'd like to find out more about IUL and the whole life, check out these videos right over here, and we'll see you next time. Now go maximize your cash flow.